Welcome everyone to the Generational Zeitgeist podcast by Lostra UM India. This is a series of podcasts where we discuss all things Gen Z. This is the first podcast of the series. I am Kulnath and with me I have our Mark Darshak strategy guru, CEO of Lostra UM India, Aditi Mishra. Hi Aditi. Hi Kula. Good to be here. Yeah, I am also very excited for this one. So we'll start while this series of podcasts will look at different aspect of the Gen Z but today's podcast specifically we'll look at the five things that really stood out in our two years of research that we did but before we get on with those five things itself we just want to touch upon a few of the main highlights of our research uh, we reached out to about 1000 Gen Zs in terms of quantitative uh, research surveys and about 100 Gen Zs we personally reached out so we spoke to them at length we have collectively about uh, 50 to 60 hours of recording and uh, some of them you'll be hearing during through the podcast and beyond that we've also deployed some other interesting techniques like uh, mind mapping we did with quite a few of the gen z so these are some of the few highlights what was interesting according to you so two three things i think uh, the first as we know gen z is like a buzz but for today's marketers everybody wants to know more about them they are the people who we think will be our consumers of the future a uh, big impact on what is getting consumed seen uh, bought by people mm-hmm. uh, so it was important for us to really understand them uh, also i think an interesting technique that we really used is rather than you know traditional ways of going to a market research partner or mm-hmm. looking uh, at you know some other pieces we actually roped in the gen z insiders so yeah. so pretty much you know uh, the the key part of this is this is understanding of gen z by the gen z and then us uh, from the outside interpreting uh, what it means uh, what it could potentially hold for us in terms of communication marketing and what could we do with all that we have learned so i think the the variety of techniques you know rather than just a questionnaire or just a group discussion mm-hmm. with a set of people this whole intermix of techniques and the fact that it has been collected with gen z's themselves uh, gives us a lot more authenticity in the voice that we have got yeah. and because it's over a period of time uh, yeah. especially a period of time which has changed the world quite dramatically yes. so you know right from the onset of covid to to how it has panned out over the last two years it has also given us some nuancing in terms of the way gen z has evolved yeah. over this yeah, period yeah, of time yeah 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 the, how they faced it how they recovered through this process for certainly for sure and you mentioned that definitely the gen z insiders are one part then i am a millennial you are a gen x person so there's an overlay of all kind of generational and interpretation of those data points and so that's why we are calling it the generational zeit guys so with that uh, we'll start over with the first point that really stood out was that these are the generation of action so they are participating in the progress of the nation helping communities together to move ahead so that's what one thing like really stood out how they are completely focused on not just their personal career but also helping others their peers their family members or somebody who is in need so they're helping everyone around them to move ahead that's a very encouraging thing for the country yeah so i, I think see uh, young people or or youth yeah. in a way you know it is is always an age when when you are more uh, absorbing what's happening around you and therefore mm-hmm. a lot more idealistic yeah. a lot more wanting to make a yeah. change and a difference in the world around you mm-hmm. and uh, i think the way situation has panned out this this audience or this this uh, gen z consumer is all the more uh, you know focused on this aspect mm-hmm. the other thing which has changed if we look at you know how things have panned out across years is that uh, they have a lot more exposure they have a lot more understanding of different kinds of things yes uh, nothing is as taboo as it was you know earlier mm-hmm. if, you, if you look at maybe 20 years earlier there were topics you would not discuss mm-hmm. there were topics you would not raise up mm-hmm. whether it's within your home mm-hmm. whether it's with your teachers or mm-hmm. with your uh, friends but today uh, in a sense not too many topics are taboo you are mm-hmm. okay to discuss a lot of things yeah. you are you are therefore a lot more open mm-hmm. and uh, that has helped them i think to have this wide and progressive mindset that yeah. they can look at things they can evaluate things and then uh, sort of interpret what it means for them yeah yeah certainly so this exchange of opinions and the access of internet so they know what's happening all around the world so all the good news bad news they are facing a lot of challenges in their time so therefore they collectively believe they would be better off moving together rather than fighting against each other another point about action is all about they are very entrepreneurial in their spirit so definitely this is a startup generation and everybody is talking about starting up something new while they want to do that they also want to get good experiences so a lot of people we spoke to they want to 
get certain experience in, in say let's say corporate world or in other career but they don't want to be stuck there they want to move beyond that and create something uh, which will impact the society as large so that is another point of action that we are talking about yeah so uh, you know uh, one of the interesting things which has emerged over years is comfort with change you hmm. know they are they are open to looking at change uh, a, a career a profession is not cast in stone hmm. it's not that if today i decide to be a doctor uh, tomorrow if i'm not a doctor uh, you know life is going to fall apart hmm. so so they're very comfortable with this whole idea of phases of life and if they like something they want to do it for some time and then figure out is that what they want to continue doing yeah. and there is no discomfort in saying okay i don't want to do this any longer and let me do something else and at each stage it's it's meaningful and it's it's adding to them yeah. so uh, that is a very very big shift i would say speci- especially in uh, india because uh, traditionally you know we've always been and even now when we talk to you know maybe people of my generation in terms of you know what they want their kids to be and all mm. uh, a, a lot of them still have those uh, tracks you mm. know this is how uh, you you should have yeah. somebody evolve yeah. or somebody grow yeah. but uh, when you talk to gen z mm. they they are very comfortable with saying yes i know i want to do mm. something and this is what i would like to do but it's okay if that is not what i want to do five years down the line mm. and and this whole resilience of Uh, living with change looking at different things i think that's a great thing because yeah. that allows you opportunities that allows you to innovate that yeah. allows you to look at different things yeah, yeah, yeah. and probably a richer life uh, you know in a way yeah yeah so now we'll listen to one of the gen z members she's shivangi she's from patna and this is her clip I cannot do it on a much greater level because obviously I'm not in a position right now. Mm-hmm. So what I could do is with my kids' ability, I used to go in and teach uh, children there. Mm-hmm. So that was the least that I could do. Mm-hmm. And I have a lot of thoughts for the future when I will be able to do things nicely. But uh, so now I go in, go in an NGO or I go to the orphanage house and talk to them. You know. encourage them so so that they feel motivated and think that someone is there to look out for them so to prepare the future of our nation they need to be you know common state and encouraged so yeah so yeah she's about 22 years old she's probably starting her career but she is managing time to go to some ngos and contribute and help because she believes that that's the future of the generations so that that was a very interesting thing how she believes that just ideas are not good enough we must also contribute in help building and moving towards the future together so that's what was interesting yeah yeah it's so just building back to what we spoke about youth you know youth have traditionally been idealistic and and want to contribute yeah. and all the more in this generation because they ha- are probably less stretched with many other uh, challenges in yeah. terms of the availability or access technology looking at different kind of things that could be done and participated in so uh, there is this whole sense of us wanting to contribute there mm-hmm. is a sense of you know us actually doing even small actions so whether it's a discussion uh, with friends around a, a topic like mental health mm-hmm. or or uh, looking at you know how to teach people around me or or enable mm-hmm. things around Mm-hmm. so a lot of that kind of action is happening and especially when we spoke to uh, you know gen z in tier 2 towns that's yeah. what came up that yeah. it's not metros alone metros yeah. yes there is a, a lot probably known uh, kind of a thing yeah. and lives are busy yeah. but in smaller towns as well there is this whole desire to yeah. improve things around you to yeah. better what's happening certainly and uh, while they are being idealistic and we'll move over to the next point now while they are being idealistic that does not mean they are not rational they are not perceptive in their mindset so they really see through all the rhetoric because of the whole information age that they are in they are very uh, perceptive to about whatever they they are being offered to so you cannot fool them we cannot fool them the brands cannot fool them and neither the can the politicians or uh, things around them so to a certain extent uh, they are very skeptical also towards politics these days and also question uh, the education system as well so these are the two areas that they definitely want a lot of changes yeah so uh, as we know last uh about 5 7 years uh, politics and 
and the way uh, different ideologies are both mm-hmm. in our country as well as across the mm-hmm. globe there has been a change in mm-hmm. terms of you know how things used to be versus how things are today and mm-hmm. therefore what is important today and uh, and it's great that gen z is actually questioning and it's looking because that makes it a lot more uh, relevant and choiceful in terms of the decisions uh, that they will take yep. so they are they are uh, looking at information they are evaluating information yep. and like you mentioned you know the the growth of technology mm-hmm. enabling yep. access to information yeah, yeah, yeah. so you know let's say uh, the the queen's uh, funeral yeah. and and it's like rapidly known by everyone Everybody. and along with that there is so much yeah. of other news uh, which is coming up yeah. or whether it was trump or whether it is what's happening yeah. with with modi's cheetahs being released you know yeah. all these kind of things everybody is aware yeah. everybody is looking at information and analyzing what does it mean so yeah. not just for that moment yeah. but in the long run what is yeah. it indicating and it's good that these questions are happening yeah. because that means that they are uh, you know growing in that sense and evaluating things yeah. and therefore for the future of the country that's that's a great place for us to be yeah, yeah and and not just they are ab- absorbing information they are absorbing a lot of opinions yes. and different types of opinions and then those opinions and whether they agree to certain opinions or not disagree to certain opinions, Opinions, but they will refine their own opinion uh, over a period of time so beyond uh, just as politics whenever the brands interact with them they will see they will evaluate whether the offering is really helpful for them or not so they will evaluate all of those criteria so therefore the brands also have to be very cautious when they are offering something to gen z's right so uh, i think it's it's always true that marketing in its truest sense has to really present what is the essence of the brand and the product yeah. and and uh, never more than before because now you have a plethora of things and products which have come up is that the meaning of a brand what does a brand really stand for why is it relevant to the youth i think that has to be uh, you know sort of shared with them uh, in a, in a very very uh, clear manner yeah. because they are questioning uh, the relevance of the brand yeah. they're questioning you know just because a brand existed earlier yeah. doesn't mean it me yeah. is meaningful for me yeah. and and therefore this whole growth uh, that we see around us whether it's d2c brands yeah. whether it is new brands or new variants which are yeah. coming up yeah. because they can be more experimentative they can look at yeah. other choices yeah yeah so we'll listen to uh, sandeep he is from odisha so he actually talks about this whole bit on uh, questioning how it is important for us to question how important for us to kind of share opinions so let's hear okay okay that's uh, the first thing that we think we should do is uh, as a society we should uh, like we are a democracy so we should uh, start questioning our leaders we should start we have a great social media we have great access to social media we have all time internet and all we should start speaking up on these media first we should uh, we should make sure that our, uh, like if, if one uh, intelligent person starts saying anything no one is hearing but if 10 or 15 such people will start saying the same thing then other people might want to hear it so i guess uh as long as we have this thing technology and social media with us i think we should take advantage of that and start uh just start not believing these people and then start questioning this and i guess that do that may it will take a lot of time but it will make things uh, fall in place again hmm thank you so so there we can hear him that this person who is uh, in odisha like you mentioned not from the metros so they are also taking advantage of all the social media and uh, all of these opinions and uh, he speaks about if one person speaks out doesn't make much of a noise but if 10 20 hundreds of people speak together and that's a part of social media that we see today major brands major uh, leaders or uh, opinion builders they they are also taking note of that and shift their own uh, ideologies and perspective also mold it accordingly so that, that that's the power of the, that these people have with the seeing through all the rhetoric and questioning things around them um no absolutely true and i think uh, the other thing which has happened is that uh, they are also comfortable with dissonance somewhere mm-hmm. so while uh, there is a desire of course that you know i'm right and my voice should be heard and uh, you know therefore you should believe mm-hmm. but purely because of the way social media operates and and how it gets contextualized i think a lot of them are also open to looking at different views and seeing what is being uh, said by other people mm-hmm. so uh, the the challenge 
challenge possibly uh, which will come to us uh, you know in the future and and even from a, a brand point of view mm-hmm. is really what is being spoken about because no longer a brand can control the narrative you know mm-hmm. it's not yeah. that yeah. i can say what it means and yeah. that's how everybody will Interpret, see it yeah, yeah. Uh, because everybody has an equal voice yes. in, in building the brand yeah. and that is a very important change that most brands have to go up i think yeah. we are seeing some yeah. uh, uh, things happening wherein yeah. brands are looking at that but how do we really uh, as communicators and and as marketing teams look at how brand voices need to be not just uh, perhaps uh, spoken about or yeah. or leveraged yeah. but how a brand voice when it's democratized yeah. uh, across people yeah. what does it actually land up with? right 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 so yeah so the, these two are certainly interesting but the next point uh, is uh, something that really surprised me mm. uh, typically when we think of gen z they, we think of them as rebellious and or a very progressive very modern uh, and all of those things comes to our mind but actually when we spoke to them we really is that they are very rooted at least specifically for india they were very rooted and rooted values still hold strong among the gen z's there is importance of the friends friends are certainly important a lot of the things that they share with the friends but family actually are the most important part of their lives the things that they can share with their immediate family the parents and the opinion that they get all key important decision of their life they can share with them the open relationship that the parents have today with the with the gen z's is something that actually stood out so that is something really surprised me so i think somewhere you know uh, one maybe stays with this very built up thing of mm. youth being rebellious yes. youth being uh, you know wanting to change everything yeah. and all but that's no longer true the reason is that uh, you know families have evolved the attitudes that uh, that parents have which was autocratic has yeah. has become uh, more inclusive yeah. more democratic yeah. uh, wherein you know there is a voice that gen z has within the family yeah. and uh, obviously the 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 terms we hear of you know pester pa going and mm-hmm. and all mm-hmm. that thing so uh, that is there and hence uh, i think there is comfort at home not just in terms of you know the physicality of home mm-hmm. but also in the way that they can be a lot more of their authentic selves they yeah. can they can talk about issues which concern them and uh, the families are also a lot more open so that environment along with i think uh, the period of the study in terms of you know covid mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. you you had uh, per force you you were at home and yeah. and you had to probably engage uh, yeah. a lot more with people at home than yes. you might have done otherwise yeah. when you were out in college yeah. or or work or whatever yeah. so that has led to stronger bonds that has led to you know a realization of what it really means yeah. so that's one the other thing uh, is i think a lot of people when we spoke to a lot many of them said you know my hero or the person i look up to yes. is my father or yes. my mother yes. or my uncle or my grandmother you know so lot of people are actually now looking inwards or or within around you for yeah. uh, you know what you would want to aspire to yeah. versus you know some some far off unknown hero figure yes, so yes. it in a sense it has become more real yeah. it ha- it has become more actual in terms of what you will be doing yeah. uh, and and that's that's good because uh, that then keeps them rooted in the reality of yeah. what life is yeah. the other thing i think is this interesting balance that they have created that mm-hmm. you know being modern and progressive is not really discarding tradition Be- yes so i yes. i'm okay with yes. some of the traditional things that i need to do yeah. but at the same time i'm okay doing modern things so yeah. doing uh, a puja in the morning is not contra to going for a dance party yeah. you know they both can coexist and i'm the same individual who is able to do both yeah yeah that that was very interesting and while they admire a lot of the uh, things from the western uh, societies uh, but they are very proud of being indian and proud of a lot of the indian heritages that they have acquired like for example festivals pujas or a lot of people actually beyond gymming and all that stuff a lot of people actually spoke about how they do yoga so that is very interesting to see that whole thing about modernity while having this balance of culture of or indianness yeah so i think it's important for us to you know sort of step back and link it to the rise of india on the global stage mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because uh, you know maybe when you you were at this stage <laughs> yeah. uh, or or definitely when i was at yeah, this stage yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was all about you know the best is the best, best yes. kind of huh. mindset yes. you know in india you, you you don't have many things mm-hmm. and india is not able to do many things mm-hmm. and and therefore you look outside yeah. for you know what what is possibly the best of something whether it's products whether it's opportunity yeah. etc yeah. 
but today with the growth of india on the global stage the way we have uh, you know come uh, far ahead as a yeah, country yeah. Uh, and the fact that uh, it is uh, respected uh, as as uh, you know a uh, 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 values or things that we have taken yeah. to, to the larger uh, world i think there is comfort in that yeah. that uh, you know any product that you want it is now available here or you can get it here yeah. in terms of growth yeah. or in terms of how the economic markets yeah. are evolving india is a big uh, part today versus yeah. you know many years back yeah. uh, so that impact i think is felt because you are more confident about what is india yeah. you are more confident about your identity yeah. you don't have to look outside yeah. so uh, while you are creating you know what what you will be as an uh, as a grown up you know mature so called person yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the gen z is very comfortable with this idea of yeah. pulling together multiple aspects and facets yeah. to create yeah. a new identity yeah. and and that's great because it's looking at the best of all yeah. in, in yeah. a sense yeah, yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. so that that is where i think this whole background of where we are in terms of a country yeah. is is sort of feeding into that yeah yeah so we'll listen to ninad he's from delhi uh, he's uh, he's also a uh, 22 year old uh, and he speaks about how culture has really shaped him he's is otherwise very progressive but he's got a lot, lot of rooted values that's what we'll hear actually culture is what makes us and uh, if i am nothing if i don't have a culture on nothing what i feel like is it has made me what i am the the feeling the culture the uh, the tradition that i have been following in my family it has you know somehow shaped me into what i am right now okay and can you name a few traditions or customs that you follow uh you know every day it's just one thing that you wake up you uh, after freshening up and everything you just you just do a small prayer to the god that's what i do i mean and it has been uh, going in my family for two years we you know we have a lot of something we have a kind of beer in our house it is burning in the city It has been burn, uh, burning in my house since I was born, and in my parents' house since they were born. So they were around seventy-five or eighty years of tradition of that being done. I can't do that. So there are many small things, you know, which we follow. Everyone has their different things which they follow. Yeah. Oh, okay, I understand. So there we can hear that Ninad he is so much influenced by culture and and he believes that whatever uh, he is today is because the culture has shaped him that way and he talks about this akhand dia in his family that's been burning from his birth as well as from his parents birth so th- today one fine day he'll not wake up and he'll say ki nahi nahi sab acha nahi all of this are not good so we'll move ahead we'll move to progressive values no he'll respect that he'll adopt all these progressive values around him whatever is happening and he'll bind it he'll he'll fuse it together with all the traditional values that he holds really dear no no absolutely and uh, you will see this uh, uh, faith i think is a very underlying uh, mm-hmm. thread in our communities in our our culture yeah. and uh, the open celebration that we have in terms of uh, uh, how how we look at different religions how we look at celebrations yeah. uh, and and how visible uh, they are in fact it's interesting to note that some of the traditions have only become more visible mm-hmm. you know when i was younger probably uh, celebrations were a lot more muted yes. in terms of you yes. know within the core community yeah. and 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 today again technology <laughs> at play <laughs> so so you know you have all kinds of playlists of music yes. you have all kinds of other things yeah. you, you have cards e cards yes. you, you have big you know yeah, yeah. shows pretty yeah. much uh, yeah. put up so so there is a lot more visibility of faith yeah. but at the same time the the core way that your family or or mm-hmm. your uh, you know community celebrate something that becomes an inherent part of it yeah. so yeah. Uh, this this whole comfort with duality this comfort mm-hmm. with yeah. able to straddle different worlds yeah. so as to say yeah. is is something that gen z is is quite okay with yeah 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 this balance actually that's actually the fourth point that we will talk about that how they seek balance between things so they while they're very young they're very much matured that is something that balance that they seek is something was very interesting so while they're absolutely open towards technology they also see the other side of technology which is like overpowering and too much intrusive and all of that so that balance they are constantly seeking similarly when we talk to them about health we ask them what do you think about health while they spoke about physical health or being physically healthy they spoke a lot about being mentally fit 
it so that is uh, something that really was interesting for us to observe for the gen z yeah so uh, i think mental health has come to the fore it's it's not a topic that we don't mm-hmm. talk about yeah. or or don't understand i think a lot of brands have also taken initiatives wherein they have tried yeah. to enable this yeah. and especially because last uh, two years i would say have yeah. been tough especially yeah. in this regard yeah. and uh, you know it's impacted so i was just having a conversation with uh, one of my friends uh, a few days back yeah. where we were discussing that you know at my age Two years is is a relatively small span yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. But let's say for a Gen Z, when when you are uh, you know thirteen and you become fifteen, yeah, that's a big change. Yes, that that's almost like a life stage change. Yes, or or when you are uh, you know seventeen and you become nineteen. Yes, when in school out of school. Yes, or uh, uh, or you know. Uh, suddenly not a teen to a teen those yeah. kind of things those are big changes yeah. and that has resulted in a lot of pressure yeah. a lot of challenges that this uh, generation has faced yeah. in a way yeah. and therefore this whole uh, issue of wanting to talk about mental health realizing the importance of mental health and yeah. helping yeah. Uh, them through that has come to the fore yeah. uh, also seeking again uh, you know ways to engage so while schools colleges etc do have help but also technology in terms of you know sites where yeah. you can read where you can engage your groups yeah. support yeah. groups support all groups. of that has come uh, a, a long way yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, i think that realization is important um, that it's not just about the physical aspect of life but the mental aspect which is important because otherwise i can't be my best i can't do uh, what i'm supposed to do yeah. finally uh, pulling back to gen z is you know very in a way i would say very rational outlook yeah, yeah yeah uh, a, a lot of their uh, issues are looked at very rationally yeah. through information yeah. and, and then they decide okay what yeah, should i yeah, do yeah 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 so we'll listen to rithika now and she she also uh, she speaks about this mental health and how it is important mental health is like Healthy lifestyle, uh, like how we have talked about the mental satisfaction. Healthy lifestyle is something when we are physically physically healthy. First of all, we should be mentally healthy. You should do something which makes you happy. And if like obviously in life, you should not run after something you which is giving you more money. You should run after something which is giving you satisfaction. So first of all, you should be mentally happy. You should do whatever makes you feel happy. And after that comes the uh, physical well-being. Obviously, when we are mentally fit, you can take care of yourself. You can have a diet, good diet. In fact, you can do exercise and proper workout every day. You should give some time to yourself in the whole 24 hours. So that is what it is all about. It should be physically and mentally. The person should be physically and mentally fit for a minute and twenty minutes every day. So there she speaks about like being how physically and mentally bit also speaks about happiness now happiness is very much important for them because once you are happy once you are in a good mood when you are in a good zone good place then you can focus on all kinds of things including your physical health without a men- good mental health you cannot be physically very fit so that she really stresses well Yeah, so at 18, uh, you know, there's a very mature yeah. kind of a thing saying yeah. don't run after money. Yeah, let's yeah. look at this. So it's a good balance. Thing. Yeah, you know, understanding what is important, yeah. evaluating that, yeah. and then talking about what should be done yeah. to make it happen. Yeah, and in- interestingly, like the other day, I was also talking to one of my colleagues, and he was talking about this whole new trend that's happening, which is all about quiet quitting. Like yes. people, people who are kind of after pandemic realizing that how my personal life is also very important, so therefore they are doing. that much of work which is required they are not very much going after the career for putting everything on the line so that that is also a very interesting like again balance balance is what you are seeking and very maturely handling that situation so there yeah. yeah so it it is uh, <laughs> quite quitting as has multiple aspects but yeah. i think uh, what last two years have done for everyone is you you've relooked at your life yes you've relooked at your priorities yeah. and uh, you know unlike people who are, who are possibly already you know 5 7 years into work yeah. gen z is just starting that journey in many yeah. ways yeah. so they are already uh, sort of queued in to understand what should be important for us what should be the way we should want to design yeah. our lives yeah. so in a in a way it's it's like you know very consciously they have understood this role of we are the architects of our life ahead yeah and and therefore what is important how do we balance things yeah. and uh, be rational and informed yeah. about the choices that you are making yeah similarly for the brands also it will be important because brands uh, does a lot of social good 
while they appreciate their understands that but also they see real value of the brand what value the brand adds to their life so that balance is important for the brand to also deliver to the consumer so with that i'll move over to the uh, final point or the fifth point that we'll discuss today which is all about that they are very pragmatic functional and solution seeking mindset is something that they have they prefer function over emotion they will evaluate everything very rationally they are well informed even if there are certain emotional factors that are there uh, they'll give a proper scoring to that that okay this is much is good like for example auto like looks of the car or style of the car they will give a score to that okay this is this much important and all of those rationally breaking down a decision that is something that's really important for them and also important for the brands to notice that offer something which is actually adds value to the gen z's life so yeah it, i think it's it's uh, uh, the way of looking at any kind of a choice they make in terms of a brand yeah. or a product that they want to bring into their uh, arena uh, is is this uh, evaluation on hard parameters so yeah. is what is the quality what does it do for me yeah. what is the pricing so uh, you know unlike getting swayed so there are categories like for example let's say a handset mm-hmm. you know you you would want the next better handset and yeah. if you have to stretch a bit uh, you would do that and yeah. and then the trade off might be that you know two times i don't go out with my friend yeah. because you know yeah. i want this yeah. so very very hard wired uh, i would say way of thinking yeah. that uh, this is what is important yeah. let me prioritize what is important for me yeah. and uh, it it runs through i think uh, the way and lot of uh, gen z that we spoke about the thousand of them yeah. along with the the depth interviews gave us this view that you know uh, they are able to step back yeah. and evaluate what is it doing for me <laughs> it may be a great thing by yeah. itself a brand may be brilliant but is it really for me yeah and this for me uh, evaluation like you said it's 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 a very um, i would say uh, okay not not necessarily on paper pen but it's it's a very clear you know pros mm-hmm. cons yeah. kind of a trade off yes. that that they are uh, sort of doing yeah yeah and the other interesting part is that you know i am doing my trade off yeah you want to do another trade off it's fine i'm not judging you for your trade off yeah, yeah, yeah. but but so we, we can align even in the same set of friends or yes. same group yeah. we we can okay to be different and yeah. it's, it's fine but yes. i will take the choice that i really want to do Yeah, yeah, certainly. So in this research, we also compared the Gen Z with the Millennial, and that's what we noticed that uh, Gen Z skew more towards uh, quality, trust, uh, access, price, reviews, recommendation, and all. While Millennial skew more towards how brands are socially responsible, are they cool or not cool, or if the advertisements that kind of really appeal to them or not. So that kind of really uh, uh, talks about the skew of how Gen Zs are very much functional, while Millennials are. slightly emotional or slightly values all of those factors which are uh, more skewing towards the emotion uh, appeal along with that uh, we also asked a lot of other question where uh, we asked them about how what are the criteria that they appreciate the brand so the biggest criteria was all about whether the brand really serves a purpose or not solves up something or not that's exactly talks about what you were talking that they is it for me or not that's personal and also uh, something that actually suits their uh, pocket so that is another factor that really stood out which is almost about 81% said ki it has to fit my budget it has to fit suit my pocket yeah 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 so we we know that uh, yeah. this is the age when uh, money is at a really tight yeah. you know while while there is this we spoke about the fact that a lot of them are looking at entrepreneurship they are mm-hmm, looking at mm-hmm. ways yeah. of diversifying how they want to grow yeah. but still they are dependent uh, you know for some other source for yeah. uh, the money that they have yeah. and hence the, this whole evaluation of how they want to uh, stretch that how yeah. what is the maximization that they can yeah. do of that uh, budget yeah. is is absolutely critical yeah. all the more because now there are so many more choices yes. you know so much you yeah. can do yeah. so much you can try hence uh, from a brand's point of view while meaning is important mm-hmm. but also so value hmm. value not just in terms of the price alone yeah. but overall value in terms of whether it's recognition whether it's you know freebies or additional access that i can get to things how yeah. i can learn other things those are all things which start becoming very important Yeah, so we'll listen to Proverb. He's a 15-year-old uh, kid from uh, Noida, and he speaks about pragmatic mindset that he has. Uh, 
good quality and which are long lasting that sort of fun like uh, uh, for say edra edra setting and all of you like uh, good quality uh, uh, they are uh, good they are, quality products yeah they are good quality products and they have uh, long lastness and they have the shoes and all are very fine they provide a perfect grip uh, and they are reasonable so i prefer for bigathon and adidas all right and the brands that you don't like mostly the there are no such brand that don't like but personally i don't like uh, all the tom hill figure not because these uh, this is too ex- uh, too expensive clothes like it's just a uh, uh, a margin for the people who are uh, not too no, not too plain and when they see like they can't buy they feel inferior for that so do you really at your age do you really prefer yes i prefer because uh, at, at from this is we should be uh, more careful at how we spend our money and try to conserve it because we should need to learn the value of it so you are aware about the expenses yes that- so there uh, he's a 15 year person and but how much mature he is so he is talked about that oh, this is the money that i have and this is something that i need to prioritize so therefore i'll go with this one nothing against tom hill figure that's how he probably shops so therefore he prefers more brands which are value for money and delivers good quality products and that's that's his criteria so that's how he shops yeah the interesting uh, thing that you know we sort of decoded from this is the whole impact on luxury as a category mm-hmm. you know so yeah. uh, what do luxury brands need to do how do they need to engage and and hence the whole aspect of sustainable luxury mm-hmm. uh, reviewing fast fashion and, mm-hmm. and you know how much of fast fashion is really required yeah. so those are some of the other trends that sort of get impacted by these kind of attitudes yeah, like, yeah. you know just because i can afford it can, yeah. should i do it and and if i don't buy uh, then do i feel inferior yeah. what are the implications of something like this yeah. and and that sets a brand thinking that if i am in this space yeah. how do i appeal to these kind of audiences how yeah. do i make my brand and product meaningful for them yeah. because they will be the buyers of tomorrow yeah yeah so like uh, you mentioned about fast fashion we spoke about how h&m what h&m are doing with the whole recyclable clothing and all that what they are doing so a lot of people have spoken about it while they see that h&m is not so pocket friendly brand but still how they can uh, contribute and uh, not feel bad about and uh, so that was uh, one thing that stood out in terms of fashion other brands that in terms of tech uh, that really stood out like boat or one plus those two brands really among the tech brand really stood out so basically that boat offers good quality product at a good price and similar to oneplus oneplus also has the heritage or legacy of doing that yeah so uh, that is the i i would say the opportunity for uh, uh, you know for growth hmm. so uh, we ha- we have this whole suite of traditional brands and you know legacy brands which have been there for yeah. a long time but there is this opportunity for new age brands to come and make a difference yeah. because uh, people are now a lot more receptive yeah. to this as yeah. long as you have a product which works yeah. at a price which is great yeah. you have the opportunity to make a difference yes. and and that's what we are seeing with the growth of lot of t2c brands that's one part yes that yes, a yes. lot of brands have taken yeah. wherein you know they have got great growth yeah. because you are talking to consumer directly yeah yeah certainly so finally i'll put a very unfair point to you a <laughs> question to you rather how do you summarize all of these and what really one thing that you would want to talk about the gen z is that really appeal so uh, i don't know appeal <laughs> is a, is a is a good word but uh, what i think is important for us to learn from yeah, from yeah, yeah. this broad line of the discussion is that uh, gen z while they carry the idealism of youth they they carry the emotion of wanting to change things but they are different from the generations previously because they are a lot more informed mm-hmm. and rational in yeah. their choices yeah. so so uh, it is important for marketers or or brands to sort of straddle both you, yeah. you can't have an only emotional story it yeah. has to be rooted in the reality of mm-hmm. some function yes yes you know so yes. so otherwise you'll be discarded otherwise yeah. you'll you'll not be adopted yeah. so so that balance is absolutely critical yeah. Yeah. uh the other thing i think which i personally took out is is you know the future is bright <laughs> <laughs> there, yes. there, there is, yes. it's it's great news for all of us when when gen z is really making choices in such a thought through manner yeah. and uh, they they are really looking at things which are meaningful not just for them in isolation but for the society at large yeah. wanting to make a difference yeah. and this whole ability of 
balancing the tradition the custom along with the need yeah so these two things i think uh, you know make me feel very good that there is there's going to be great things coming yeah yeah certainly certainly great things coming and i i really like the the refreshing clarity that thing that they observe and see the world around take their decision and also uh, the way i see is they might not be major disruptors but they are definitely in for evolutionary innovations constant innovation but innovation that adds more value to their lives and as i was going through all of these research work and all of the understanding about gen z i was asking myself constantly whether where was i when i was 22 <laughs> year old or 19 year old what was i doing so uh, so that's it for today uh, the five points that we discussed uh, if you like to listen to this podcast and want to listen to more of such podcast look up generation is right guys do share this podcast with all your marketing colleagues or friends around and help us uh, be more visible Thanks for listening to us. Have a nice day. Uh, bye. Bye bye.